Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Favorite Album of the Year. It's Sunday morning. Gorgeous day out here in New York. We're at 2006. Can you believe it? Only 13 more of these to go. It's been a kind of fun ride for the last, you know, X amount of years or days, as it uh, turns out. But uh, it's been fun. You know, it's like I think when I started this little series, uh, I didn't realize how much of a challenge this would be to you know not only go back and take a look at all those great albums that are released you know this late 60s the 70s the 80s the 90s the 2000s but to actually kind of whittle things down to like you know one favorite and one uh runner up you know of course i generally list some honorable mentions but uh just picking those top two is like is pretty hard and while you know obviously we all have our favorite decades i mean for me you know the 70s and the 80s that's that's where my true love is but, uh, you know, like the, the more we go through this whole series, the more you realize just how many really tremendous albums have come out, like in the 90s and the 2000s, uh, especially by newer bands, right? And a lot of great newer bands. So, in, uh, so my favorite today, I kind of had a feeling that the one I picked was going, it was definitely going to be in my top couple. Uh, I wasn't quite sure until I looked at the overall bigger picture that it was actually going to win today. And, then, you know, now that I've, I've actually picked it, I'm pretty happy with that. So, And this band actually has uh, appeared on this show a couple days ago. And, um, or was it yesterday? <laughs> losing, losing track. Anyway, real recently. Uh, and my runner-up, actually, this is the first time they're being featured here. Uh, I've actually had them on my larger lists uh, quite a few times over the last kind of week, week and a half. But uh, today, they're actually going to be my runner-up. So let's get started with my pick. Released September 12th, 2006. I actually, this is the second time I had to record this show. Because in the first attempt, I actually grabbed the wrong CD. And I'm like, I'm showing it. And I'm like, wait a second. That's not the right one. Fuck. So I um, had to kind of restart. I probably should have just kept going with that. But that would have been kind of funny. But anyway. Uh, released September 12th, 2006. Uh, for Reprise slash Relapse Records. Uh, produced by Matt Bales in the band. I'm talking about Blood Mountain by Mastodon. Let's get a, there we go. Glare free shot. Uh, after, of course, the wonderful Leviathan, the band come back and release another concept album. This time a concept album about being stuck up on a mountain and all sorts of crazy crap that happens to you, what have you. Uh, another tremendous, tremendous album from the band. Big production. Big riffs, a uh, little less reliant on the harsher vocals here, a lot more melodic vocals come into play. Very, very proggy. So the band's love of kind of progressive rock and metal uh, really starting to come to the forefront here. A lot of intricate riffs, great, great uh, drum work by um, Mr. Brian, or I'm sorry, Brand Daler. Okay, incredible, credible drummer. Uh, you got Troy Sanders on bass and vocals, Brett Hines on guitars, vocals, and of course, uh, Bill Kelleher also on guitars and vocals. And um, a bunch of guest musicians on here. You got uh, Josh Hom shows up, Scott Kelly, uh, a few other people. But for the most part, this is just a kick ass album with some great songs. You know, you got the uh, kickoff track, The Wolf is Loose, absolutely terrific, crushing, Crystal Skull. So heavy, so intricate, sleeping giant. And these guys just had, um, you know, they combined like, especially early on, uh, you know, because at their core, they originally were more of a hardcore band, but they had a love for progressive rock and metal. So you had this, and, and also Sludge and Doom. So you had this kind of collision of all these styles. Work really well. You had, you know, a couple of the guys in the band sang, which added some nice variety. Uh, uh, what else? Capillary and Crest, Circle of Sasquatch. Great, great song. Uh, Blade Catcher, very cool proggy instrumental. You had Colony of Birchman, which I know for a lot of people is probably their favorite track on here. It's amazing. Hunters of the Sky, Hand of Stone, This Mortal Soil, uh, Siberian Divide, and uh, Pendulous Skin. So it just, and the album just kind of really paces very well. And the, the sequence of the album is just fantastic. A lot of headbanging going on here. It's, it's a very heavy album, but again, it's quite proggy. So if you've never listened to Mastodon before and you've always kind of heard things about them, I would say if for your first step into the world of Mastodon's music, I would say Blood Mountain and the follow-up Crack the Sky. Definitely Leviathan also. Uh, Leviathan, you know, because some of the vocals are, are kind of on the harsh side, they're not death metal growls. They're more like kind of like um, like hardcore style uh, bellows and barks and things like that. But um, I would say definitely this album and Crack the Sky are two great places to jump on board with the band. Fantastic stuff. Again, some more really good artwork there. It's my favorite of the year. 
but my runner-up. Uh, you know, I even uh, I was even toying about possibly having this be my favorite. But the more I thought about it, it's like I had to give the edge to Mastodon. But I will say I love this album here. And it's my actual favorite album from this band. And this is, uh, for me, you know, this band has gone through lots of lineup changes over the year, years. And this was their first release with their, at the time, brand new singer, who has been with them now all these years. And they've released a ton of great albums with him. But I always tend to go back to their first with him. And it's just a, a great collection of songs. It combines their love of uh, death metal and folk and prog and gothic textures as well. I'm talking about Finland's Amorphous Eclipse. First album with Tommy on the vocals. Tommy. Fantastic songs. Really memorable. Uh, I love his use of death growls and the clean melodic vocals. He's got a great voice. He kind of reminds me, they don't sound alike, but he reminds me in a way of like uh, Michael Ackerfeld from Opeth, back when Opeth was still doing the death metal thing as well. He could go from those real deep, beastly death metal vocals to gorgeous, clean melodic vocals, and Tommy does that here as well. Um, just fantastic stuff, so many great songs, great melodies, catchy songs, brutally heavy, proggy in spots, folky in spots, just love it, love it, love it. So, there you have it, Mastodon, Blood Mountain is my favorite Eclipse by Amorphous comes in runner-up. So, what else does Pete have on his list in his bag of tricks for today? What else did I jot down here? How about a little 10,000 Days from Tool, Iron Maiden, Matter of Life and Death, uh, Spock's Beard, self-titled, The Sword, Age of Winters. The Sword makes their way into my uh, honorable mentions here. Uh, Enslaved, Rune. I think we're going to be hearing a lot more about Enslave over the next couple of years. Uh, Communic, Waves of Visual Decay, Celtic Frost, Monotheist, Satyricon, Now Diabolical, Spawn of Possession, Noctambulate. Yes, I was listening to a lot of uh, extreme metal right around this time. Uh, what else? Strapping Young Lad, The New Black, Isan, The Adversary, Mercenary, The Hours That Remain. That's actually, you know, it's funny. Uh, going back and looking at uh, our top picks of the year on the website on catranquility.org, uh, Mercenaries, the Hours That Remain actually was my favorite of that year. That's what I put down. But it's, it's funny how, you know, you, when you're doing these things, you kind of have to go back and say, well, what, what was I picking back then? But what has resonated more with me over the years? So that's the reason why, uh, you know, this one kind of rose above, even though I think this was number two on my list at the time back in 2006. Uh, it's since kind of passed Mercenary, but still a good album, Mercenary. Uh, Lamb of God, Sacrament. Listen to that a ton. Into Eternity, The Scattering of Ashes, Suffocation, self-titled. Uh, another very, very honorable mention. Uh, I think this also came in at like maybe number three at the time. Uh, Zero Hours, The Specs of Pictures Burnt Beyond. Fantastic progressive metal album. And Van den Plas, Cristo. So those are some of my other picks for the year. Some of my other favorites. But like I said, in the end, it comes down to Blood Mountain by Mastodon and Eclipse by Amorphous. There you have it. So you know how it goes, guys, in the comments below. List your favorite of the year, your top three, your top five, your top ten, twenty, whatever you want to do. No right or wrong answer. We all hear these albums differently. We all have our favorites. So it uh, be interesting to see what other folks pick. And then uh, tomorrow we move on to 2007. So in the meantime, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Coming up this week, a lot of stuff on the agenda. Martin Popoff's coming back on the show. Uh, we are going to rank the catalog. We're going to put two catalogs together because they're both pretty short. We're going to do the catalog of Montrose and Gamma, of course, the two great bands uh, manned by rock guitar legend Ronnie Montrose. Uh, coming up on, that's Tuesday. On Friday, Martin's coming back on the show. We're going to do our top ten songs of Gillen, the great band led by, of course, Ian Gillen of Deep Purple fame. That's coming up later this week. Uh, what else? Got it. Actually got another a big surprise on the calendar for later this week. I'm not ready to announce that one yet, so that'll be coming up. Big, big guest star. Uh, Mike Antonelli's coming back on the show sometime later this week. We're actually going to start up a brand new theme show. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the title of the show yet is going to be, but it's going to be something like classic lineups. So we're going to talk about those bands that had like a legendary, legendary lineup, either the one lineup throughout the course of their whole career, or a band that maybe had multiple different lineups, but one in particular is talked about and revered in rock history as like their great, great lineup. So this, this could be hard rock, metal, 
jazz, fusion, prog, you know, classic rock doesn't really matter. So uh, Mike and I are actually kicking it off. The first band we're going to tackle is Led Zeppelin. So uh, and just it's just kind of like a discussion of what made that lineup so special. Okay, and how all the individual parts, all the members were just so important to the overall sound. So that's kind of the vibe we're going for that show. So that's coming up later this week. Uh, as well as uh, lots of other ranking the albums. Uh, some of the bands that are that I'm hoping to get to this week is Gary Moore, Robin Trower. Trying to get that Procol Harum one done. Uh, John Neodorf and I are trying to do, uh, hopefully we can get together either this week or next week to do um, the Moody Blues. Stephen Reed's coming back on the show. He is going to be ranking the catalog for us of the Wild Hearts. Uh, we're going to do top 10 songs of Europe. And what is the other one? He and I got something else in the works. Escaping me at the moment. But Steve, we're doing three shows this week with Stephen. So looking forward to that. So lots of stuff happening. So you don't want to miss any of it. Tune in. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Come back often. Bookmark. Whatever you got to do. But we'll see you guys later on. All right. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.